And the step that you just said was we're doing acetyl-CoA formation. How do we form acetyl-CoA? So NAD plus. And then it turns into NADH and doesn't one of the carbon molecules come down to create CO2? Yes. So what goes in? Um, to get create CO2? Oxygen. Oxygen. So we needed oxygen to go this pathway, so oxygen comes in, grabs the carbon, and creates CO2. So we have an O2 molecule, and we create CO2. Okay, this brings us down to a two carbon chain, which I'll address that in one split second. So real quick, I'm gonna make a clarification. From this point forward, I am talking about one pyruvate molecule. Questions could say something about a glucose molecule, so you would double these numbers, okay? Because they could either specify a pyruvate molecule or a glucose molecule. And a glucose molecule makes two pyruvate. Does that make sense? I just wanted to clarify that real quick. Okay. This two carbon chain with the other groups it has on it is called an acetyl group, okay? So the acetyl group is going to attach to coenzyme A, creating, so, so CoA, creating a, an acetyl CoA. Does that make sense? Seem a little confused. No. Well, I know it connects to the, uh, the CoA, mm -hmm. but then don't you have to connect it to the oxyacetate? We will. Yeah, we just haven't. That's after this. Yeah. CoA yeah, so acetyl connects to CoA, then it attaches to oxaloacetate. Okay, real quick thing, just a real quick aside, because a lot of people forget about this. Beta oxidation, okay? So, if we can't, if glycolysis isn't working for one reason or another, what do we do? Like say we ran out of sugar. Fats. And it can be one other thing besides fats? Proteins. But typically we shoot for fats over proteins. Okay. So we've got a triglyceride, okay? Glycerol and three fatty acids. Everybody okay with that? Glycerol, when it's broken down, it enters in right here, the three carbons with the phosphate. But there's only one glycerol, so it's, you don't get very much energy that way. The main way you're gonna get energy is these fatty acid chains, because these chains are really long. This is a very unproportional picture. So these fatty acid chains you learned about earlier are made of a bunch of carbons. You learned that one time before, okay? So an enzyme, goes through and breaks apart, them apart every two carbons, creating acetyl groups, which then can go down right there, attached to CoA, and then you have acetyl-CoA, which, which will attach to oxaloacetate. Everybody all right? What is this process called, going from the glycerol to up here? The glycerol to here. So, break, glu yeah, gluconeogenesis. So, gluconeogenesis, what does that word mean? Yeah, technically it's not actually glucose, but yeah, yeah. but that's what the word means. So, because genesis means create, neo means new, gluco, glucose. Okay? So, because you were saying lipogenesis, because yeah. I, I, som I sometimes, like, when I'm, when I jump on an answer, sometimes I, I actually say lipogenesis fairly frequently. But pause, like on test, pause, think. Lipogenesis, what does that mean? Genesis creating, creating a lipid, fat. Yeah, which is yeah. fat. Yeah, so lipogenesis. So, yeah, no, you're, you're totally fine. If, if I wasn't trying to hit so many topics, I would have paused and said, think about it, because then I know you would have corrected yourself. But I'm just trying to hurry. So lipogenesis is the other way, as well as going from here to here. It's lipogenesis. And that's no. when the glucose is full, right? And it can't take any more glucose in, so that's when it's like that? 
Yeah, um, it's so if we're getting um, too much energy and we need to store it, we can either store it as glycogen or we can store it as fat. And so if we're getting, if we have a bunch of glycogen, we'd start storing it as fat. When, for one reason or another, we're not breaking down glucose molecules anymore. Either we use the glucose, um, or if we're diabetic, we can't use the glucose. Okay? So what was this process called, going down? So um, this one's gluconeogenesis, but this one is beta oxidation. Okay? Yeah, so forming acetyl-CoA from the fatty acids is going to be beta oxidation. I'm specifying that one because it's a very forgotten thing to study. Just to clarify, the gluconeogenesis takes place of the 2-pyruvate, right? Um, sorry, what so do you mean? Like, because usually you have a glucose and that breaks down to 2-pyruvate. Yes. But the gluconeogenesis takes the fat and breaks that down. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Some I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're totally fine. I just wanted to make sure I understood your question. So fatty acid going to the Krebs cycle is beta oxidation. Correct. Which is what again? Yes. Beta so these two carbon chains that we because we get an enzyme that breaks them two carbon chains, it forms an acetyl, two carbon, an acetyl group, which comes down into the Krebs cycle, joins with CoA, creates acetyl CoA. However, if we get too much acetyl-CoA, we start getting a byproduct. It starts getting changed into ketone bodies, okay? So we can, if we get too many ketone bodies in the blood, then we can go, go into what's called ketoacidosis. Do you remember talking about that a little bit in class? Is that what the people with diabetes get? Um, yeah, it's... Is they type. Type one? Um, I'm trying to remember which one it type happens more with, but yeah. Type one is beta cell destruction, so you don't have enough insulin. Yeah. Glucose, yeah, I, I know the difference between the two, but I can't remember which one ketoacidosis happens in more. So I do not know that off the top of my head. Using your understanding of how sugars and fats are metabolized, explain how a diabetic person type one might get ketoacidosis. So it's type one. Cool.